actually I didn't look to see if this had linear correlate, but this is okay. So this one is asking for the regression equation and such too. So um, I'm going to talk about that here, which means that there probably is linear correlation. So that's that's good. I want one that actually does that. So. Um, Hmm. Movies and books. A study was done to look at the relationship between the number of movies people watch at the theater each year and the number of books that they read each year. The results of the survey are shown below. That's interesting. All right, so is there a linear correlation? Hmm. Well, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it doesn't necessarily seem like either one of these is definitely the independent variable because technically either one of them could be independent. Um, but let's see, number of movies people watch each year and the number of books. So this is kind of telling me that we want to determine the relationship between the number of movies people watch at the theater each year in the number of books. So I'm going to say that they want to see if movies um, changes the number of books. So if books is dependent on movies, if that makes sense. So my movies is gonna be my X and my books is gonna be my Y. So I'm gonna put movies in L1 and books in L2, okay? We'll find all this stuff in a second. So I'm gonna go to my list, stat, edit. I'm gonna erase this stuff. And we're going to put this in. Oops, clear, enter. Okay, so movies is going in L1. So let's put it 0, 1, do it with me, 5, 3, 0, 1, 3, 3, 1, and 4. So I should have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, that looks good. L2, 13, see, look at that, 13, 6, 4, 5, 13, 12, 9, 4, 8, and 7. All right, cool. So put them in. If you guys are watching the recording, you can pause it, put it in, or whatever. So I want to, again, let me see if Jennifer's here. Just. Yeah, I want to see again what it looks like, what the graph looks like. What does the scatter plot actually look like? So I'm going to graph it again. So second and mode to quit. Again, if I want to graph a scatter plot, which is what I would want to do here because this is going to show me if there is just visually correlation, linear correlation, if it's strong, if it's not, because the closer together the values, the points are, the, the stronger the linear correlation. I could see if it's positive, if it's negative. So uh, again, stat plot above the y equals is where you can um, choose which statistical graph you want to graph on your calculator. So you always press second and then y equals to pull up stat plot. Okay, these so you could do multiple you know statistical graphs if you want. That's why they have a list here. You only need to start with the first one. We only need one. So just the first one and then enter. And this is not where I graph it from. This is just telling it which graph I want it to graph. So this is just inputting the stuff that it needs so that it knows what kind of graph I want. And, and obviously I already have it on. Everything is kind of already set because I did it before. I have it on. Obviously it has to be on to show. If it's off, it's not going to show. I tell it which type I want. I want the scatter plot, which is the first one. Look at your top left. Or at least look for stat plot on the top left. You should have it if you have the 84 cow. Um. I'll come back to you, Jennifer, if you still can't find it. Should be. Should be top. OK, cool. Yeah, it should be top left stat plot. OK. Um, and turn it on, which means scroll over to it and enter to turn it on so it's highlighted. And then the first graph is the one that I want because I'm doing a scatter plot. So scroll over to that and press enter so that's highlighted. 
And then you have to tell it your X list and your Y list, but it already has it, right? I put my X list in L1. I put my Y list in L2. So that's all set. I don't have to change anything else because this is just basically, I'm gonna show you, oopsies, go back. I'm gonna show you that if you change the mark, all it's doing is changing it from a dot to whatever you put. Okay, so it doesn't, the mark doesn't matter either, unless you want it to look like this square instead of this square. So everything's in there that I need. Okay, now if I go to graph, which is where I would find the graph, it doesn't show up, but that makes sense because my X values have changed from my last example and my Y values have changed. X is the horizontal axis, Y is the vertical axis. And in this particular case, my X values go from zero to what, five? And my Y values go from four to 13. So I have to tell my calculator that as well. And I personally like to go to window to do that because I'm telling it exactly what I want the window to show. This is my window. I want it to show me something particularly. So I go to window and I tell it, the minimum x value that I want and the maximum x value that I want, x min, x max. So for this one, x is going from zero to five. Um, go from zero to six. I just go a little bit past what is in, you know, in here. And I would probably, instead of starting at zero, maybe start at negative one, just to show zero, you know, go beyond what it, you know, what it has here and then my my um x max is six yeah because i don't have any value bigger for my x list than six um this is just saying that i'm counting by one and my y min the smallest y value that i have here is what four so i'll make my y min zero and then my y max is 13 so i'm, I'm gonna make it 15 just to go outside of what's here just so that i can see my my um, my values and it's not on the actual lines. Then the rest of it leave. This is just counting by one. And I'm expecting now when I go to graph to see it because I changed the window. I changed you know the window that it's showing. So now you can see my graph and you see it's like little squares instead of what it showed before because I changed the mark. So if I were to guess, I would say that it was a negative correlation because it's going down which means as the number of books increases, as my X increases, I'm sorry, which is representing number of movies, as the number of movies increases that somebody watches, the number of books that they read is decreasing, which I guess, does that make sense? I guess, like if we want to watch a lot of, I might be that person where if there's a book and there's a movie about that book, I'm probably going to watch the movie and read the book. So I guess that could make sense. So there might be a relationship between the two. Um, it looks like it could be linear. I don't like that there's, you know, there's a lot of space between these values. If they were closer together, it would be stronger. Um, but it looks like there could be linear correlation. And so we'll see. We'll, we'll go and run the test and we'll find the linear correlation coefficient and we'll see what matches. So this is me just looking at it. I want to see what it looks like, okay? I didn't do anything for this problem yet. Again, I'm going like past what the problem says just for me to visualize the situation so it makes more sense to me. Um, and then we'll go beyond and we'll find the correlation coefficient, uh, I'm sorry, the regression equation and everything too. So I'm going to get out of this second quit. And now I'm going to run the test, find the p-value. Obviously, they want all that stuff. State the conclusion, see if it makes sense to get the regression equation. I don't know if they asked me to approximate anything. Do they ask me to approximate? Yes, they want me to approximate something. I guess I'll take this. Uh, oops. I'll add this to my, my stuff for this question, okay? All right, so here, let me add this because we'll end up doing this. What is this, the linear correlation? Yeah. Okay, so all this goes with this problem. Now, now I'm going to run the test and do all this stuff. And so let's do it.
I might not have space on this. So let's go to this. All right. So, all right, I'm set up. So, again, I go to stat and I scroll over to test. And I'm going to go down because I want to do linear regression. So, lin reg. And then it's a t test, right? You're going to do this same thing every time. Same thing here. My x list, I put in L1, which is typical. That's what I do. My y list, I put in L2. But look, my frequency leave one. But look, this is a two tailed test now. See my alternative hypothesis? Two tailed. Now, the drop down menu here. Um, I didn't find the correlation coefficient. I need to put the null and alternative first. I'll do all this together. But my drop down menu here says row, mu, or r. So obviously you're not doing mu because there's no average that you're running a test for. It's not going to be r here because it's always parameter. So this is your, you know, your row, which can I fit that here, right? This is your, I guess I could fit it like there, row kind of thing. It's like a fancy P looking thing, right? And then um, we'll find the P value. So it's a two tailed test. So I want to make sure that I highlight two tailed when I do this, right? Make sure that's highlighted and blinking. Okay. Sometimes you scroll over it, you don't press enter and you don't actually lock the test in there too. Okay. So double check that sometimes that's why P values are wrong or whatever. Um, leave the, the reg EQ by itself and then calculate. I'm going to pull all this out for your notes again and put it here because I'm going to use it. And um, I don't know if you guys are doing my particular question with me or your particular question, but if you are doing it with me, then hopefully you have the same values that I have here. And it's good practice. You could do it from, you know, the problem that I'm doing. You could do it for the problem that you're doing. Again, you scroll down. There's more information. If you need R squared, that's here as well. Okay, everything is basically given to you. This is not um, crazy stuff. This is all kind of given to you there. It's just a matter of now you taking that and then using it, right? Okay. So again, the information that you get from this the first thing, we don't care about this one. The first thing is my alternative hypothesis, my test statistic. I don't think you guys even ever have to do that. The p-value, right, which is, what are we rounding to, four decimal places? 0 0.0101, which looks like, where's my alpha? Did they give me alpha? Alpha is 0 0.05. I'm already determining that I'm rejecting the null based on that, just thinking ahead. You don't have to worry about degrees of freedom, but obviously that's something that goes with T tests and such. Um, A is your y-intercept. This is going to go with your um, regression equation, which we need for this one. B is your slope, and then you have your correlation coefficient, and then your R squared if you need that. Um, so my, my correlation coefficient rounded to two decimal places is negative 0 0.76, which I would say Right, it's closer to negative one, which means that it's a negative correlation. Um, it's not extremely close to negative one because if you look at this, it's not extremely strong. It's negative, it's possibly linear, and it's a linear kind of pattern, but it's not extremely strong because these values, these points are kind of far away from each other. If they were closer together, it would be stronger and you would expect this to be closer to negative one, which is why I like to graph it. Um, all right, so cool. So we said, I'm already done with all this. We said that the p-value, I already said this, that the p-value was less than alpha, right? Because 0 0.01 is less than 0 0.05, which means that we are rejecting the null. And if I'm rejecting the null, then I'm going to support this. And remember what these mean. If I'm rejecting, the null is saying that the population linear correlation coefficient is equal to zero, which means that there's no linear correlation. The alternative for two-tailed is just saying that there is linear correlation. It's not talking about um, positive or negative. I'm not testing for positive or negative. Like here, I was testing to see if it was positive. I'm not testing for that. I just want to determine if there is or isn't two-tailed tests. So 
<clears throat> um, being that I'm rejecting the no, I'm going to support this. I'm saying there is linear correlation. I'm not talking about whether it's positive or negative, just that there is based on my test. So let's see. There is statistically significant evidence to conclude that a person who watches more movies will read fewer books than a person who watches fewer movies. So I'm going to keep that there because that makes sense. That's saying that there is correlation. And it's saying that as X increases, person watching more movies will read fewer books. Y decreases, which is kind of what we said based on the correlation coefficient being negative. And my graph, right, is going down. The more movies I watch, the less books I read. Let's see what the rest of these say. There is statistically insignificant evidence to conclude that there is a correlation between the number of movies watched. Now we're saying that there is correlation, and this is saying that there is insignificant evidence to conclude that there is correlation, which is the opposite of our situation, because we're supporting that there is. Let's see. There is statistically significant evidence to conclude that a person who watches fewer movies will read fewer books. So these two are kind of very similar, but this one is saying that a person who watches more movies will read fewer books. And this is saying that a person who watches fewer movies will watch fewer books. I'll come back to that in a second, okay? So now your process of elimination, you, you have two choices, but let's see if we need to include this. There is statistically significant evidence to conclude that there is a correlation between the number of movies watched per year uh, and the number of books read per year. Now look at that. And the reason I said ah uh, is because technically I wasn't doing a right-tailed or a left-tailed test, correct? I was literally just doing a two-tailed test to determine whether there is or there is not linear correlation. If I were doing a right-tailed or a left-tailed, then I might look at, you know, at uh, the situation where as this increases, this decreases or whatever. But being that my test was two tailed, I'm basically just determining if there is or there is not correlation. So I'm gonna go with this. There is statistically significant evidence to conclude that there just is a correlation between the number of movies watched per year and the number of books per year. We're not talking about as one increases the other because we didn't talk about positive or negative based on the, just based on the alternative and the null hypothesis. Thus, the regression line is useful because there is a linear correlation. So now we're probably going to be asked about the regression line. So um, being that technically part A is not necessarily incorrect, the test was not right-tailed. It was basically two-tailed. So I don't need to get that detailed. It's just is there or is not, or is there not linear correlation, if that makes sense. So um, I'm not sure if I skipped anything, but yeah, um, I want to talk about the regression equation, okay? And I'm going to copy and paste this because we need this for this, okay? So I said that um, this will also give me my, my regression equation, which is does. Um, this is slope intercept form, if you remember, kind of slope intercept form. And the coefficient in front of x is your slope. And b represents the coefficient in front of x. So b is your slope. And a is your y-intercept, if you remember. So when you're writing your linear regression equation, actually, I'm going to write it twice. I'm going to write it here, and then I'll write it over there as input. Okay, now I'll tell you what y hat is in a second. y hat is equal to, now they're representing it based on how this is represented. So a comes first, and we're rounding to two decimal places. So I would usually, no. usually we do more than that because we're using this to approximate other things. So we would typically take a crap ton of these values, but round how they ask you to round. Plus b, now b is negative, so technically plus a negative, so plus negative 1.57x if I'm rounding to two decimal places, which is really unlike us when we do this. Um, but that's how they ask us to round. So I'm just going to input that here. So my y-intercept is 11.39 based on rounding to two, and my, co my slope, which goes in front of x, and this says plus negative 1.57. And my slope should be negative because technically if there's 
negative correlation and it's linear, then I would have a negative slope. So this is all making sense. This is all going along with what I'm seeing here, which is why I like to see it. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I guess I won't jump here yet. Use the model to predict. So by the way, y hat, y hat, it's not y. Y hat is like saying it's a predictive value, predicting your y. So that's why they're not using y and they're using y hat because it's predicting the y outcome. It's not necessarily the exact case that would happen in real life, but it's predicting based on our uh, based on the line that we have, which is typically like in the middle somewhere. But you can see that there's going to be potential error and that's analysis that you guys don't have to do in this course, but there is analysis with with how much error there is in your regression line and how far away it might be from the actual value in them. But you don't have to deal with that. But you're using your model to predict the number of books read per year. I'm predicting the number of books. So remember, number of books was my Y. So I want to predict the number of books. Where did that go? Which is Y. Predict Y for someone who watches four movies per year. And movies represented X. So this is my X. So they're basically saying when X is equal to four, what would y be approximately? Predict. So find y hat. That's all they're saying. It's really plug and chug. So y hat is equal to 11.3. So this is taking you back to algebra. Minus 1.57 and you're replacing x with 4. Okay, y hat is the approximate y value. Round your answer to the nearest whole number. So let's go here. I'm going to do 11.39. And I want to subtract. 1.57 times 4. 5.11. Now, I, it wants me to round the nearest whole number. This is 5.11, but it's an approximation, so approximately 5. Just approximate it. Um, okay. And they could give you any, sometimes they give you more than one of these predictive or, but now interpret the slope and interpret the y-intercept. So I think I'm going to do the y-intercept first. I think that's a little easier than the slope. Um, if you guys recall, let me put that down here. If you recall from algebra, a y-intercept is a point with an x-coordinate of zero. So the y-intercept here is 11.39, rounded to the nearest hundred, right? So remember that x represented movies. So basically for zero movies watched, this is the number of books, right? For zero movies watched, the person reads 11.39 books. So let's see what kind of goes along with that idea. The best prediction, and this is typically good because it is just a prediction, but the, pre the best prediction for a person who does not watch any movies. Okay, so that right now is going along with what this says. They're not watching any movies. Is that they will read 11 books approximately per year. So I'm not getting rid of that yet. If somebody watches zero movies per year, then that person will read 11 books per year. Now, this is very similar to the first one, but you see how it's very definite. And we can't be that definite because, again, this regression equation is an approximation for the situation, but not definite, right? So I can't say this is definitely true. That's a very definite statement. We don't, if you notice, we don't use a lot of definite statements in statistics. The average number of books, there's no talk about average. The y-intercept has no practical meaning. That's not true. It always means something. So boom, the best prediction for someone who watches zero movies, they would approximately read 11 books a year. But this is, I guess, a prediction, right? Um, now the slope. slope. So your slope, which is m, is a rate of change. OK, always, always a rate of change, which, you know, if you remember, is always your change in Y over your change in X. If you remember, so my Y here. Is what number uh, I forgot. 
number of books and my x is number of movies. So I'm just going to say, um, I'll keep it simple, change in, um, what was y? Whoa, change in books. <laughs> I'm just going to say change in books over change in movies. And then I'm going to get even more detail. This is me going in, you know, in detail. My slope is negative 1.57, right? Over one, if you remember that. So there are a couple ways that you can interpret this. Um, you can say that there is a decrease um, in, in books. So every, so every, um, if I decrease the amount of books, that I read by 1.57, then I'm increasing the number of movies that I watch. This is positive, this is negative. So I'm just gonna say decreasing 1.57 books, just to suggest it, I'm increasing one movie per year. Um, I could also put the negative on the bottom, just to show you that there are different ways to approximate, to um, interpret a slope. This would be an increase in approximately 5.7 books, which are 1.57 books for every decrease in one movie watched. So I don't know. I didn't even look at the options here, but I know that there are different ways to basically interpret this. Um, so we'll see what matches. So for every additional movie that people watch each year, so for every additional movie that people watch each year, I'm decreasing my reading by about um, we'll round up to two books let's see oh they have it exactly as 1.57 for every additional movie that people watch each year there tends to be an average decrease of 1.57 books read now this looks good this basically goes along with exactly what i put here but let me just check the rest the slope has no practical meaning as x goes up y goes down oh so the process of elimination even without really going through detail of interpreting slope, I could basically determine that A is my answer. So, so this was, yeah, so, and it looks like a lot of these questions have you go through each one of these things um, per your question. So wait, let me stop recording.